My job requires that I'm in domestic violence court on a weekly basis. Because of this, I have an unlimited supply of party stories. Woman requesting restraining order from husband. Says her husband is obsessively controlling. When asked for details, she gave two examples. First, every time she sees him after a period apart, he demands to smell her breath to see if it smells like dick. Second, he requires to log and counter tampons because he's suspiciously using them to soak up other men's semen. Husband sitting on the other side of courtroom. His face went. Guy has limited interactions with his adult daughter, despite living with her. She sends him almost a dozen original emails a day, claiming to be a prophet of the new lord. Pages and pages of evidence with some hardcore text. When it comes time, we will wear your skin, kind of shit. Dad begins to get freaked out. Shows up to court with, and this is not an exaggeration, 12,000 of these emails, all original and at least a thousand words. She doesn't show. He hasn't served her. He somehow hasn't seen her in a week or so. He goes home that same day, goes to sleep, wakes up. Daughter naked, covered in her own blood. Cuts all over. House reeks of gasoline. She's laughing, holding a lighter. Begins shouting shit. Dad tackles her. She's withering and screaming. Gets control over her. Commits her next day. Showed up in court with a story anyways, and got a year restraining order, just in case. Overweight, thick-rimmed grease face shows up. Six out of ten, feeble-looking woman requesting a restraining order. She and the guy originally had been dating. They broke up. Turns out he took her naked pictures of her while she was sleeping during the relationship. She doesn't know this. Six months later, she has a new boyfriend. Wakes up in the morning, goes to her car to go to work. Her car has had every inch of it covered with naked photos of her. All angles, everything showing. Fucking super glued and thick paper so she can't really do anything about it. Sitting in the middle of a suburban neighborhood, tries to pour water on it, doesn't help. Manages to scrape off enough the windshield to see. Drives Coochmobile to the nearest mechanic, stares from everyone, recognizing the driver from her spread legs and tits plastered on the side windows. Has to get a power wash to some shit. Dude is laughing in court as she recants this. Admits to it. Judge approves the restraining order. Guy freaks out. Your Honor, you don't understand. I wasn't doing it to harass her, but to tease her new boyfriend. Sits back as though that changes a lot. Judge doesn't give a shit. Guy's face went five year restraining order. Middle Eastern woman comes into court, trying to get restraining order against ex-husband. Hasn't served ex-husband yet, so he's not there. Goes over statements to the court. Here's the situation. Six months before she filed, she got divorced, and her husband moved back to Sandland. A few weeks before she filed, after not seeing him for almost a half a year, she has an alleged incident. She's sitting at home, in front of her closed window, reading a magazine, drinking tea or some shit. Glances at the road. She sees a car begin to come down the street. Windows are dark, and she can't see into it. Looks vaguely like ex-husband's car. As it passes by, she suddenly goes into an electric shock. Immediately realized that she had been drive-by tased. Calls the police and files a report. Just asks the woman, your windows was closed and the car driving by had its windows up as well? Yes, it was a very strong taser, and I still feel the effect. Ma'am, I'm afraid that's not how tasers work. He tased me! Even if it was a stun gun, that couldn't have happened through two sheets of glass as he was driving across the street. Lady goes batshit. Claims the judge has no idea what her ex is capable of. Claims he must have invented new weapons technologies to produce such a taser. Lady also later claimed that he has been trying to kill her, as evidenced by her seeing a loose wire hanging from a telephone pole and her drive home from work. Apparently that was him trying to electrocute her again. My favourite part of this one was just thinking about if she had been right. What if her husband really was a fucking military genius, and was just electrocuting people at his whims? Lady eventually was forced to leave the courtroom, and denied the protective order she requested. Wonder if she did died. Here's a really fucking weird one. Woman requesting an order against her ex-BF. Boyfriend moved out about three months prior. They've had minimal contact since. She declares that she needs protection because he has been ejaculating on everything I own. According to her, this motherfucker had been sneaking into her home on the daily and spraying jizz on her household items. Sticky phone, sticky purse, sticky pots, sticky pans, sticky dog, sticky chairs, you name it. She says this had been happening for close to a month. She said she immediately knew what it was and who did it. Guys looking making the biggest, what the fuck, face in court. Responds with a basic, why would I do that? Who would do that? I've moved on, blah blah blah. Woman interrupts and produces evidence for the court. Judge looks at it. Private testing she had done. 
Confirmed for semen. Confirmed to his semen. All of it was his semen. Just asked the guy if he has anything to say for the record. I've never had this much use for this gif, but the change in his fucking face when. Too much glee up in here. Let's take a turn for the sadder, with my first, that dude is going to die, experience. Mexican dude in court. Claims that his wife's two brothers are harassing him and physically intimidating him. Wife complains to her brothers whenever her and her husband have a problem, and the brothers retaliate. Follow the husband in their car wherever he goes. Not saying anything, slowly rolling behind him. On the few occasions he's confronted them, they've tried to physically subdue him and take him. But they've escaped, even once through a fire exit. Never a police report filed, because they flee when they hear the police. Both brothers are from Mexico. Third brother from Mexico, as well, is in jail for murder. Both are huge, imposing, tattered guys. Husband is tiny, looks like comically like a 20th century Mexican rancher. Restraining order request is denied because no police request. Husband looks terrified. Brothers are smirking in their denim and flannel. Less than a month before husband goes missing. Still technically a missing person. Come on. And now, I return to me trying not to die laughing while in court. Husband and wife are separated, but have no restraining order. Have custody order that is constantly a subject of debate for them. Two kids, boy, 10, and a girl, eight. One day, dad shows up from school to pick up his kids, like he's supposed to. Mum shows up too. Dad gets daughter, but mum grabs her son and takes him, saying it's her turn. School does nothing, both parents drive away. Boy in mum's car begins to yell that he wanted to talk to dad. Mum calls dad. Mum calls dad to get him to shut up. Gives the kid the phone. Dad, I want to see you. Don't worry, dad. I have an idea. Fucking 10-year-old boy proceeds to, in the seat next to his mum, drop his pants and start shitting. Takes the fattest of shits of his life all over the front seat, oozing down his crack and all over his pants slash legs. Smell is unbearable. Mum freaks out. God damn it! Immediately drives him to the dad, and gives the dad the son because she can't deal with it. Mum and dad proceed to spend at least an hour of the court's time, arguing over if the dad instructed the kid to shit his way out of his shit situation. Dutch's face during all of this. Alright, last one, because I need to sleep. I legit do have court in the morning. This one was fun. Guy trying to get a restraining order against a lady for obsessive behaviour. For the year after the relationship ended, she texted him every single day. Stuff like, Good morning, sexy, or I hope your day is going well, stud. But also stuff like, I hope that bitch you're fucking knows what we did in that bed. Declaration even gets graphic shit like, I was having a bad day until I started thinking of you and found an old bottle of Astroglide. Thanks for the two orgasms. These go on, multiple per day, for a year. Guy doesn't respond to a single fucking text. Not one response. Literally over a thousand text messages of her talking to herself. Guy shows up to court. He's like 55, 5'4", broad-skinned, destroyed too much by the sun. Wearing cowboy boots and sporting a stick white mullet slash goatee combo. <laughs> Looks like a joke. Woman shows up. Legit 9 out of 10. Feet are stirring. Here comes the crazy shit. She denies none of it, but isn't really paying any attention to the hearing. Just staring at the dude. Wearing a rather short skirt. Legs originally under the table, both responded and defended to face the judge. As the case goes on, her legs swivel around slowly to face him. Judge is lust reading out some loud litigation shit. She's not wearing any underwear. Half the courtroom is staring at her vagina. She tries to do the Sharon Stone vagina leg flash on cross, but her legs were never really crossed, so really, she just spreads her vagina further. What the fuck? Guy trying to get the restraining order is trying to ignore it wants so badly to look. She says his name. Snaps the judge out of it. Bailiff has to escort her out of the courtroom. She's screaming about the sex they're gonna have. Petitioner is almost in tears. God, that was beautiful. Continuing the domestic violence court saga from a few weeks ago. Picture is of the previous thread. In case any of you need filling in, we'll continue posting for as long as there is interest. Or as long as I'm awake. Woman waiting in the courtroom. Landwell with teeth that look like they've been putting on this old mailbox looking pencil sharpeners. Wearing full body dress that unfortunately clings to everything. Every five minutes or so, she lets out a muffled cry and spasms like McFly. Arms and legs twitch, body curls inward like a dead beast spider. 
Bailiff eventually removes her from the courtroom, because we can't have bitches crumping while the courtroom is in session. She waits outside, without incident or outburst, is alerted when her line is called, plumps into her seat, immediately shrink and crump action. Judge is not amused. Okay, maybe slightly amused. She can move for a big girl. Responding party is only represented by the lith attorney broad. Clerk swears a land while in. Judge asks for a testimony. She tries to speak. Another full body spasm. This time a full scream. Just ask her what's going on. She looks at the opposing attorney in fear. He has a voodoo curse on me. Claims that the dude didn't show up because he was too busy at wherever he be doing his rituals. Crazy look in her eye. Grabs her side. Screams, twisting her head in fear to face the judge. I need protection! She eventually settles down so they can hear the fucking case. She doesn't have a case, and the other attorney is just digging into her for it. Finally, closes with the question. Just to be a dick, I guess. If it is voodoo, why would a restraining order help? Landmark's dance recital is over, and now she's just brewing a pot of pure fucking rage after that comment. Judge looks at Landwell for response. She ignores the comment, and does the basic, I need protection, shit. Restraining order denied. Cal barnstorms out of the courtroom after hearing the results. Lawyer leaves like 10 minutes later. The rest is just off what I heard, because I wasn't there to see it. Apparently, the lawyer went to go to her car in the parking garage, approaches her car, sees nothing wrong. Suddenly, hears the squawk of bloated anger, begins to look around her, panicked, takes out a phone to call someone, and tries to get in the front seat of her car. Hamburn arm shoots out from under the car. Tell me, you motherfucker, Sliz. That's not even a joke. The lawyer clearly stated that she was called a Sliz. I don't even know. Landwell is wedged under the lawyer's car, holding the lawyer's ankle, rolling around like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, trying to turn onto her side. Her mouth is close to the lawyer's ankle. Lawyer feels she's going to be bit by the aforementioned bullet teeth. High heels on. With her free leg, she stomps the shit out of the attacker's putty-like bicep. Landwell relinquishes her hold. Lawyer's still kicking because she freaked out in hysterics. It's the courthouse, so police get there within a minute and break it up. Lardass under the car, moaning like she's in labor. Her arm is seriously fucked up. Takes like five people to get her out from under the car. Nobody has any idea how she got under there so fast in the first place, being fucking huge. Ambulance comes and picks her up. She's later arrested. Heard from one of the attorneys that she tried to blame the entire incident on voodoo, and that the dude not wanting to pay his attorney, basically making the land whale a voodoo hitman to clear his debts. This next guy was a huge beatard. I could smell it. Ex-girlfriend gets a restraining order against him for harassment after the breakup. Dude was outside her house, blowing up her phone, etc. Restraining order has been in place for about three months when the guy decides he's had enough. Comes in and files a request to end the restraining order, despite the restraining order being against him. Really makes no legal sense. And his declaration, what the judge sees for evidence, he includes the following. A 23 page report as to why she needs him in her life. Two mp3 recordings of him singing songs about her after the breakup. One video described only as a love video, not a sex tape, but apparently just 30 minutes of videos he took with them while dating, bowling, at the park, barbecues, etc. And some slideshows he said to his personally recorded mp3s from earlier. Here's the best part of his declaration. 12 8.5 by 11 Photoshop movie posters with his and hers face on them. All done absurdly well. Doesn't make any sense either. Because the movies aren't even fucking romance movies. Lord of the Rings, Clanny with a Jazz of Meatballs, and what I'm pretty sure was originally from a Firefly DVD cover, to name a few. All of them with his face and his ex's face doctored in. This was the evidence he was submitting to the judge. His court date comes around. This is gonna be good, the JPEG. Guy shows up and takes his seat. Doesn't get called during the first half of court. During the recess, the bailiff announces to the court employees that someone there is going to be arrested. All of the court employees are excited as shit. Turns out it's our man. He's got out a warrant for his arrest for violating his restraining order by apparently repeatedly leaving posters on his ex's car. Court comes back into session. Guy's number is called. Shuffles up there. Classic neckbeard wearing unnecessarily pinstrip coloured shirt. Judge announces to him that there's a warrant out for his arrest. Cops who are at the ready charge and ratchet his arms behind his back, arresting him right there. Dude doesn't even blink, gives zero fucks about the arrest. But what about my hearing? When will I have my hearing? She needs me! My face when this guy, while being arrested for violating his shit, 
thought he still had a chance at getting it nullified because he's a pro at CS6. Alright, moving forward probably my most least interesting one, just in case this thread dies. This was the first semi-ridiculous case I ever encountered in court, so it still holds a special place in my heart. Saw this man over the span of a handful of court hearings. Small Chinese dude with thick glasses and a victim face. Originally is in court because he divorced his wife at the time. He said it was because of an incomprehensible differences. When he had served his wife with the divorce papers, she had shoved him onto the ground and yelled at him in Mandarin. He works up enough tears in court to convince them that he fears his wife and gets a two year restraining order. Kind of a stupid case, but whatever. We think that's the last we've seen of him. He shows up in court about a month later for a completely separate domestic violence restraining order. It's against his wife, or his new wife, or I guess soon to be his second ex-wife. In the time since the previous court case, he had visited a karaoke bar to forget about his ex-wife. He had fallen for one of the girls that worked there. Note that when I say karaoke bar, I'm talking about the front for a Chinese brothel. There are private karaoke rooms that all of the employees are Chinese import sex laborers. I've often thought about checking this place out actually, just for the lols, but don't have the need. Anyways, he goes to a karaoke room, pays for his sex, continues to drink with the woman, paying for her drinks, and then they go and get married that night as he continues to pay for everything. Wakes up the next morning expecting his new wife. She's fucking ghosted the premises. He can't find her. She's not at work, and the number he has for her isn't a thing. Doesn't see her for days, and is mainly just confused. That week, he gets served with an amulet paperwork, marking the marriage as void. He reads the paperwork. Turns out she's already married to some guy in China, so the marriage was never a real marriage. Big surprise, she was a paid whore. Guy freaks out and begins hanging out in the parking lot where she works, hoping to see her. She sees him and gets security to tell him that he needs to go away. Two weeks later, he shows up with some friends at the bar, just trying to forget about the whole thing with the whore. Because of course you forget about the whole thing by showing up at her place of work while she is working. He ends up drunk and talking shit about her to her co-workers while dropping money on them to get them to listen and laugh. Little known thing, Chinese women have fucking crazy tempers. While he's in the parking lot getting some air, she, according to his declaration, sneaks up and sucker punches him, which he describes as a real cheap shot. He reportedly is instantly KO'd because she's a fucking Floyd Mayweather and he has zero jaw. He has to be brought home by his friends, which he brings us to his reappearance in court, gets a domestic violence restraining order against his new whore wife. On his court day, he shows up, looking for his usual victim self. Whore shows up as well. She's actually a solid 8 out of 10. Doesn't speak any English though. The case gets called. She beckons for her translator. Guy's face fucking implodes because the whore's translator is his first ex-wife. First ex-wife just dead staring the guy from 5 feet away. Small smile on her face. He's almost pissing himself, looking around in panic. Makes absolutely no sense because he already has a restraining order against his first ex-wife and she's not even a translator. These bitches were just colluding. He cries out that this is injustice and the court forces her to leave. They're screaming at each other in Mandarin as she leaves though. It comes out that this guy was going to this karaoke bar before the original divorce, which led to the original breakup in the first place. Hearing starts and the second ex-wife admits to sucker punching him and doesn't seem to give a fuck. She's going back to China anyways. Guy gets a six month restraining order against her. She leaves, his original ex-wife leaves, and the guy walks out of there with two restraining orders feeling like a Mac daddy. Court is glad the saga is over. Wild small Chinese man appears in the court two weeks later trying to modify his restraining orders. Here's the fucking kicker. He wants to get spousal support from both of his ex-wives. Let me summarize this. Dude cheats on wife with prostitute, divorces and restrains wife after she reacts, marries prostitute, annuals and restrains prostitute after she reacts, then demands money from both of them to fund what I can only assume is more prostitute play. His fucking face when. Short but sweet. Husband filing a restraining order for him and his children against his now ex-wife. Throughout their marriage, she was a heavy drinker. He'd come home and she'd be drunk on wine in the middle of the day while their young kids are sitting around sniffing glue. She would constantly piss in their bed because of it too. He woke up many a night drenched in urine. Some traumatic shit. He eventually can't take it anymore and confronts her about it, ultimatum and everything. She denies she has an issue with drinking and basically tells him he's been crazy. He's now determined to find proof. 
Thing is, he can't seem to catch her doing it. Eventually realizes by sniffing around that whenever he would enter, she would be drinking. She would dump her cup in like a seven-year-old daughter's cup. It was the last place the guy would ever check. So there are half empty children's cup filled with alcohol around his house. The guy has a huge flash realization and finds them all and dumps them all. Woman gets pissed. Guy's now super suspicious and is always smelling their cups. Woman gets drunk one night and decides she's gonna teach him a lesson. Takes one of his daughter's littered cups, drops trowel, and proceeds to fill the cup with piss and crotch rot. Puts the lid on and leaves it on the counter for her husband to find and unknowingly stick his nose in. Goes to bed and passes out. Guy ends up going to work early and not seeing the cup. Woman ends up not getting up to help her little girl get ready for school. Girl grabs her lunch alone and walks to the bus stop alone. At least mom was nice enough to leave a drink out for her though. Yes, it happened. Girl gets to lunch at school and takes out a little cup. Takes the lid off. Begins to cry. All the kids at the school begin to cry. Whole cafeteria smells like piss. Girl gets sent home. Child services for report filed. Judge's face hearing all this. Alright, alright. Last one though, because I'm tired as fuck. I don't know why I always start these threads off so late. This one is probably my all-time favourite case. Guy getting a restraining order against his ex-girlfriend. Under the name area, on an official court name document, he writes her name, Kelly XXXXXXX, and then, in quotes underneath, writes, Kegleg Kelly, on an official court document. So begins the legend of Kegleg Kelly. Guy explains the nickname in his declaration. Apparently, she was really drunk at a party one night, and started throwing an I'm drunk as shit tantrum. Friends holding her by her waist as she spins around, yelling for her boyfriend. Boyfriend comes over, and she starts calling him an asshole for absolutely no reason, according to him. Tries to scratch and slap at him in her drunken rage, but he's weaving on his light feet. Party has a keg near where she's making a scene. While trying to shove her boyfriend of being obnoxious, she teeters and loses her balance. Falls down and tries to catch herself on the keg. Pushes up against it, hanging there for a few seconds, before gravity forces this bitch to the ground. Keg must not have been full of something, because apparently, her prolonged push was enough to get this shit to start teetering and tipping. As soon as she hits the ground, the keg starts to come down too. Topples off the table and lands straight on her leg. Crunch. She doesn't go to the hospital or anything. Poor ass people with no medical insurance. Try to set it at home and stay off it. Shit ends up healing, but not in the sense of a functional leg. Her leg is kind of gnarled now, and she has to limp because of it. Hence the nickname Kegleg Kelly. The ex-boyfriend really felt the need to relay all of this to the court. Anyways, about a year after normal Kelly evolved into the good old Kegleg, shit starts to get terrible with her and her boyfriend. Kegleg has developed severe mental issues over her accident and blames the boyfriend. Is unemployed because of a useless club limb and doesn't get disability. She has no money, so her boyfriend is working crazy overtime hours to compensate. Shit blows up one night, when her boyfriend stumbles upon quite a bit of hidden cash in their room, stuffed in her sock drawer. I mean, come on, keg leg. She's sleeping at the time, so there's no immediate confrontation. He's suspicious as fuck and checks her phone, finds text messages and pictures from other guys. Bitch, come on, suck on these nuts, and shit like that. Finds that she's been whoring herself out for cash. Keg leg has been turning some nasty tricks for spending money. Dude freaks out, wakes her up and confronts her. She's fucking insane, so she flips out and begins screaming at him for getting into her business. Limp chases him out of the room. Argument stumbles into the kitchen. Kegleg starts throwing things at her boyfriend. At first, it's just shit on the counter, like fruit and salt shakers. Thing is, and I assume it's because of her disabled leg, she apparently has developed Hulk-like upper body strength. When she runs out of shit to throw at her now terrified boyfriend, she gets into the larger shit takes out full-size heavy dinner plates and begins fucking whipping them at supersonic speeds like they're frisbees. I mean, this bitch should have done discus. Dude is now in fucking tears, dodging giant plates as Kegleg -like screams at pure fury at him. I imagine it was a lot like a bowling alley scene from There Will Be Blood, if you know the reference. Boyfriend eventually takes a second while she is crab walking around looking for some more artillery, looks at her out of water leg and gets a genius idea. Turns and just runs at the front door. He knows she can't chase after him. As he passes into the front yard, he hears a giant crash. Turns around. Giant heavy ass oak chair from the living room comes flying out through his window and lands 10 feet in the front yard. Glass shattered everywhere. Keg leg is foaming at the mouth, staring out the frame of the broken window. Biceps bulging from breaking from the physical limitations of what the 110 pound Mexican woman shouldn't be able to do. 
Get the fuck back in here! Boyfriend turns and sprints to the darkness like he's been chased by a fucking demon. Snap back to the dang corn. Kegleg's there, limping around on her club limb. Boyfriend still looks terrified. Chris Banliff stand closer in case she needs to be restrained. You don't talk that way about Kegleg. Hey, shut the fuck up! Her hand shoots to the chair. Guy begins to have numb flashbacks. She starts to lift. Multiple courtroom officers hit the situation. Takes three dudes, all over six foot, to restrain this skinny ass Latina. She gets taken out of court, and the guy gets a five year restraining order. I'm still waiting to see them again, because if I know Kegleg, and I think I know Kegleg, there's no way a piece of paper is gonna stop her. Hell, she'll Donkey Kong throw that shit from a hundred yards away. One day, B. One day. Night, folks.